Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you with all word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the responsive singing of the psalm as it is printed in the bulletin. I'll sing the odds you respond with the even verses. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let, the, let all the peoples praise you. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. May God be gracious gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us. Gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your mercies are new every morning, and you graciously provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for Thanksgiving is from Deuteronomy chapter 8. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs, flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 4. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly, that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased, and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Aphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches, in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. 
Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 17th chapter. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was passing along between Samaria and Galilee, and as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance, and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourself to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. And he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of our Lord.
grace and peace to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text is from the Old Testament reading, verses 2 and 3. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all this way, these 40 years in the wilderness, to humble and test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. There ends the text. Your fellow redeemed. In the gospel reading, we see a man there who was healed from leprosy. and We understand that he had something pretty obvious to be thankful about. Leprosy was a death sentence. It meant immediate separation from your family, from your community. You are dropped in a leper colony and left to die a slow, agonizing death. So to be healed and to be restored meant that you got back with your family, back with your community. You didn't have to sit around worrying about dying a gruesome death. That leper had a lot to be thankful for. But the action of the other nine lepers... Now, that's shocking. Even unbelievers recognize that when somebody does something particularly nice for you, you say thank you. Jesus healed these men, and they didn't even bother to say thanks. We understand how bad that is. And we understand the nature of the thankfulness this one leper who did return to Jesus had. He was giving thanks for a tremendous outward blessing. The Old Testament lesson, that's a little different kind of thankfulness, though. What was written to us today in Deuteronomy was actually spoken by Moses to the nation of Israel as it sat right on the border of the Promised Land, just before it went in. They had spent 40 years wandering in circles in the desert. They had a lot of hardships during those years. They buried family members on that journey. They had no houses to call their home. They had no possessions except the ones they could carry. And as they sat there on the edge of the promised land about to go in, they knew they were all going to be split up as families. God was only going to allow the young to go in. The old who had rebelled against him, they didn't get to go in. And going into that promised land was no picnic either. They were going to have to fight nations, have wars. There were going to be a lot of casualties. So where were the immediate blessings in these people's lives? Actually, this was written in a time of great grief and hardship for the Israelites. And yet, they had every reason to be thankful. For one, God had not abandoned them out there in the wilderness like they deserved because of all their constant complaining. And for another, all of those hardships they did suffer, they were all being used by God in such a way as to shape them into a better people, a more faithful, more trusting people. Moses told these Israelites that during those years in the wilderness, that God humbled them in order to test their faith. See, he was at work the whole time, purging them of their unbelief, shaping them into a people whose souls were more secure for eternal life. Of course, at the time, in the middle of all their sufferings, they didn't understand all that, but God had a purpose, and he never deviated from it. Israel actually had a lot to be thankful about. They had a God who loved them despite their many failings. They had a God who had been so patient with them and treated them so much better than they deserved. A God who was willing to forgive all of their sins over and over again. Most importantly, a God who was still going to preserve the messianic line within them. He would still send his son into the world to die as an offering for their sins. 
The thankfulness these ancient Israelites had was not a thankfulness rooted in any outward blessing that God had immediately bestowed on them. It was a thankfulness that was rooted instead in the grace of God that had been shown them in the past and the promise of salvation and eternal life that God had given them for the future. The most amazing thing was a thankfulness that could be thankful even though the world around them seemed to be falling apart. Though the world around us today will root its thankfulness in outward material blessings, we know as God's children that's not where our true thankfulness lies. That everything in this world could be taken away from us in a heartbeat. Our money, our jobs, our health, our ability to work, our families, the people we love, everything could be gone today. And yet even if that happens, we still have everything to be thankful about. We could be thankful that God uses our hardships and our times of suffering to shape us into a more faithful, more trusting people, just as he did with Israel in the wilderness. We can be thankful that God is patient with us in our sweet weakness and sin, that he does not treat us as we deserve, that he loves us enough to send a son into this world to be our Savior. We have a thankfulness today that no earthly pain or setback can touch. And it's that kind of thankfulness we need to be constantly reminded of because we're weak. And because every one of us sitting here is going to face his time of tragedy or trial when everything else in this world falls out from under him. And on top of that, we're a sinful people who poison our own wells at times. It's not bad enough that we have to face the tragedies and hardships of life around us that we can't control, but we also create our own problems. We choose at times to give ourselves over to sin. We just let go of our anger and let it run wild, or our lust. We let our mouth run when we should bite our lip. And in those moments when we do give ourselves over to sin and just kind of let it have us, you get that real sickening feeling inside when you realize what we've done. Fortunately, it's not sickening enough to stop us from doing it again another time. It's after moments like this, when we realize the magnitude of our sin, when we regret what we have become before God, that we tr find the true reason that we have to be thankful in this world. Because after times like that, we can come right here into God's church. We can confess our sins, and we can hear Christ's absolution. All your sins are forgiven you. And we can go to that rail and eat the same body that was nailed to the cross and drink the same blood spilled from Christ's veins and know that in that our sins are conquered. We are cleansed in the sight of God. God's kindness to us, God's constant, ongoing forgiveness shown to us, that's our source of thankfulness. As bad as our sins are, as ugly as life can be, God draws us up in his mercy and his love and he makes us his own. What we have to be thankful for today is better than what that leper had who was cleansed of his leprosy before Jesus. Because our souls are healed. And we can let go of the burden of shame and guilt we carry around. God loves us with a cleansing, everlasting love, and remakes us in his image, we can leave church today thinking, thank you, thank you for showing me this kind of undeserved kindness yet again. That's our thanksgiving. Not affected by the tragedies of life, 
And it's not going to go away when the things of this world fail us. It's eternal. And it's wrapped up in the never wavering, never changing grace and love of our Savior. Thanks be to God. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess together our saving faith with the words of the Nicene Creed on page 174. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all the bounty of your good creation, and we pray for your guidance that we may not squander nor waste what you have so lovingly given, but use it for the good of your kingdom and the help of others, Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the rich harvest that you have given us again this year. You have let the rain fall on our crops and supplied ample sunshine for growth. Thank you for your goodness, Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the times of trial and struggles that we must face, because we know that you use hardships to face to, to shape us into a more faithful people. Give us faith to accept those times of suffering, and direct us to your grace that we might not lose heart or lose sight of the true gifts of love that will never be taken from us. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the poor and those whose needs are before us. Use us and our money to help those who cannot help themselves. Open our hearts in compassion for those who suffer want, that we might not ignore them, but help supply their needs as best we can. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks, O Lord, for the great treasure of your grace and for the forgiveness that we cannot earn. You are always so patient with us in weakness and always ready to reconcile us to you. Bless us again this day with your saving grace and preserve us into your kingdom, Lord, in your mercy. To you, O Lord, be all glory, honor, and praise and thanksgiving now and forevermore. Amen.
lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayer. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also, he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen.